Hello and welcome to a solo let's play of Baldur's Gate Saga. Um, as far as I can recall, this should follow pretty much the same modifications as Baldur's Gate, the, nor the normal let's play I did. And there might be differences, but they should be minor and uh, not really influence anything. The reason they're even there is I had a hard drive problems that basically compromised a few hundred videos I've uh, already had recorded. So some I some let's plays I could fully recover. Uh, others I think like Icewind Dale 2 had like a single video at the start with basically a tutorial phase to get you into the game more or less. Uh, so, but the, everything else was okay. So the downside is the Baldur's Gate let's play that so I, I already had recorded basically went to the shitters. On the bright side there I had I have the normal let's play already uploaded to YouTube. So there's uh, at least a fair chance that it's actually okay. But the solo let's play was not uploaded and it, it's it's not about 90% of it is I could recover. The problem is it's still missing uh, at least a handful of videos and they're missing in places where I'm not really comfortable of them missing. So it's it's not it's in a most of it's there but it's in a condition that I, I don't really want to upload it anymore. Um I, I think uh yeah I played it with a monk and to put it short in Baldur's Gate 1, it functions very well as a thief type. I mean, using your. Because it's so fast, especially with boots of speed, that you can easily move outside enemy detection range, uh, sneak, and then come back and do a basically a free attack on them. So in, that way you could kill Grist and even the demon you can face in the Tales of Sword Coast part. So. And with potions, you could easily take down Saravak too and using the surroundings to your advantage. So in Baldur's Gate 2 it starts to be more of a warrior and it gains ridiculous abilities. With items you can get practical immunity to magic for God's sake. So it's a uh, it it was an interesting playthrough and it's certainly a very viable character to solo play this game. Um, actually I'm not going to just repeat that that uh, I pretend that everything is just... I'm just playing it for the first time. I'm not. Um, I want to try something that I haven't done at all possible. Uh, that might also provide... Uh, that I can't see how it'll go. I have predictions how this will go, but they are predictions. I want to basically play a bard. Uh, just a very specific type of bard, a jester. It's a bard that only has one thing going for it differently than a normal bard. And it's a normal bard buffs its own characters and yourself. A jester doesn't do anything for you, it affects others, uh, hostiles. And that's it. Other than that, it's just a normal bard. So, playing through a, with a bard. Jack of all trades, that's what a bard is. Master of none. And uh, uh, it's, it's going to be a problem. Because Jack of all trades, I think, will work for us very well in Baldur's Gate 1. Because we can use wands, we can use spell scrolls, we can cast some limited amount of spells. We're not a sh totally worthless fighter either. So we have a lot of uh, options at us that we can take advantage of. However, especially in Throne of Ball, you, you really need to know to do how to do something very well, otherwise you can't probably can't even really hit or harm your enemies. So I, I can see this becoming a huge problem there. At the same time, it might not become as big of a problem as I thought thing. I, I don't know. And that's why I'm playing it, because I, I really don't know. So, Jester. The only it has, has no disadvantages compared to a normal bard, it only has one advantage, and it is an advantage. Jester's song does not help allies, instead it affects every opponent within 30 feet, and they must save versus spells at plus 4, which is a bonus for them, once per round or be confused. Um, I know that patching 
in Polter Skate 2 adds something to this song. Uh, not like here, but when you level up enough, you'll get it'll get better. I think the it, it at least adds new abilities in addition to the confusion. Uh, I think chance gets uh, put a slow or even a stun effect on them. I'm not quite sure what it does. But I, I know it gets better. I don't. This is a big question mark because I have no idea how this will work in reality. Because bard songs are not really spells, they sort of work in a realm of their own mechanically. So, but these are very spell type abilities that we can put on other people. But they're not real. I'm not casting anything on them, it's just the influence sphere around us. So, I have no idea how this will work. I'm. I'm hoping it'll cause uh, some entertaining situations with NPC rea reactions to it, uh, um, but we'll see. We'll see. It's a hope. The reason for Jester is because it's because of the song. Uh, I can see it causing shenanigans, and that's always good. But more to the point, um, since we don't have companions, having a buff ability is sort of a eh, he naturally will also benefit from it. The problem is, uh, if I sing a song, I can't do anything else. So at least with this, I can maybe defend myself, say, be invisible or something like that, hard to hit, and still affect my enemies. So uh, I feel it's better for a solo playthrough, probably, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Blade would be if we want to be a more or less a fighter type, but I'm, I might as well play a fighter type at that point. I can see how that would go, more or less. I don't see how a chaser would go. As evil as possible, because we're gonna do evil shit. Ah, the re-rolling, oh my god, hopefully we don't have to do this long. Minimum stats on Dexterity, intelligence, and charisma are very high, so we don't really have to care about them. Uh, dexterity, physical stats are the most important ones, but I think intelligence also determines how much spells we can learn. I mean, how many, and the higher the better, naturally. Wisdom, I, I don't see any use for, but everything else has value. Again, charisma, I don't know if it has any really use. Naturally, the higher the better, but I think Charisma 15 is okay, so Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and Intelligence are what we want. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm giving this 5 minutes to produce something worthwhile. We're at that point, we're pretty much just taking the best we have if we haven't found a good value before that. I might have mentioned it some time earlier that I'm a great fan of the point buy system because it never gets reduced to this. It has a few minor weaknesses in that it produces at least ability wise very similar type of characters but for a role playing game uh, I think if stats are the main determination of how different the characters play You're not. You haven't made a very good role playing game. It's the character that should matter. Okay, this isn't too bad. Um, we're very close to at least half decent value. We're mainly interested in strength, constitution, and wisdom because those are the places where we have points to move about. The others will be more or less high no matter what we do. So we don't really have to care about them. So just three stats that we're basically staring at, and I'd like them to all to, all to be around 15 if possible. That should give us a decent amount of points at least to get the things we really need. During the game we can naturally raise stats a little bit, 
but we want they uh, still want them as high as possible. We need to carry a lot of stuff, so, and melee is probably what we're going to use a lot of times, so we can't really. Um, yeah, let's store this. We can't really ignore any real stat. We don't have a lot of hit points, so constitution is a must. Although I think a constitution value of 16 might be the best we need. The reason for that is that really warriors are the only ones who benefit from the higher constitution values. Everything, Everyone else I think sort of gets stuck on a much lower value and that no matter how much they raise their constitution it won't make much of a real difference in your amount of hit points anymore. You don't get additional bonus hit points. I think we have a fairly decent uh, score already. I'll keep this going for a minute or two just to see if we can get some kind of a jackpot stats here. Um, not bad. Still, I think we have uh, one point better already. Uh, on anyone else, the score we have would be fantastic. The problem is they're already put into place most most of the points, so it's it appears better than it actually is. It, it's still a solid selection of stats, so it's not a it's not a problem if we have to go with that. Oh, yeah, I think this is what we have already. Okay, let's try to just let's stick with this and see where it goes. Um, physical attributes have to be as size possible, and we're still left with seven additional points. Um, if we can dump on wisdom. We can. I don't think anything really. Yeah, it might. Yeah, wisdom measures characters' enlightenment, judgment, and common sense. Five prerequisites for priest. Having that as a low is actually role playing friendly too. We have no common sense, not with really. um, Intelligence effects are spell casting, so I'm, how many spells we can learn, so I'm inclined to keep it as high as possible. This way we have spells in store that we can switch between. I think we can only learn 6 level spells at maximum, so we'll never get to the truly powerful ones, but we should have a decent selection of them. Um, uh, oh, this is terrible. But in, in you know, in a weird way, it is appropriate for our character because I don't intend to give a crap about what happens to others or around us, at least to a large extent. I really don't, but. And intelligence is also good to have high because we're gonna have to face mind flares quite a bit in Border Skate 2. So it'll provide us with additional buffer before they suck out our brains. Sure, it makes a lot of sense to suck out this brain, but whatever. Yeah, I think this is, this is just fine. Just look at that. We're we're drooling for God's sake. So yeah. Low wisdom is uh, certainly certainly not out of character. We will get natural pickpocketing skill, which I don't particularly care. I might care at some point, but uh, at, at least at this point I have no use for it. We want a ranged weapon. Uh, probably should take a longbow, mainly because it's better than short, and bow arrows are most useful in general. As a weapon I can see katana being very useful, but there's no good katanas here, so we'd have to take it later. We can basically use every weapon. A bastard sword or a long sword? I think a good lo magical long sword is something you'll get much earlier. 
two-handed sword might not be a bad idea either. Uh, I think there's a like, plus three two-handed sword fairly early on. That's the only downside. Yeah, only downside to it is it is actually cursed, causing you to go berserk. But again, it's in certain situations, what does it matter? The problem with that is we are, I think, a tricky class, a trickster class in many ways. So we need to maintain control of what our character does. If we don't, we're we're in trouble. So let's say there's a good dagger in this game. It poisons. It's very good if you play the sneak around to hide and stab type of character because it has a poison effect that lingers. You can't stay and attack, you just want to hit once very as hard as you can and then move up to the side. So an assassin type character would be very powerful too. You could it gets a seven time multiplier on its backstab. That's insane. That that is absolutely incredibly powerful attack you could do. And I don't think anyone really is immune to critical hits. Could be wrong on that. Enemies don't usually wear helmets. I'll take longsword, it's a fairly typical weapon and we're guaranteed to get a magical one fairly early on, I think. Uh, later on we'll spread about as we see fit. And longsword should be good enough in Baldur's Gate 2, so no matter what, what happens with this we're guaranteed to have at least useful weapons throughout the game. Mm, yes. Appearance. Purple and teal, I guess this is. Or whatever. Whatever it is, I don't know. Probably has a proper name. Red hair, dark, light skin. Yeah. That is us. That is definitely us. Death to you all! As it should be. I must rest my eyes. Oh, such a waste of time. I... I am surely close to death. What? Make it quick. Yeah, this sounds fine. A name. Who's our... In... Drooling ba uh, Jester. Uh... Uh... Bob the Jester. Nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the sword coast. Yep. Uh, in general, I do want to let those uh, text scrolls do their little speech without interruption, but basically that just tells us that, yeah, you were born in and raised in Candlegate. Something's wrong and you have to leave. Okay, thanks. Bob, Bob the Chester. I like this. Why don't we have any spells? Did the wisdom? Is it too? Do you need some kind of wisdom value to actually learn how to use spells, or is uh? First of all, Bard unable to cast, that's certainly a possibility. I think intelligence affects our casting, so I'm s assuming wisdom is a total dump stat. Oh, other way. Uh. A waste of my talents. How much money do we have? 20 gold. That, that's, yeah. Uh, that's, that's nothing, that's worthless. Wonder Of course. Did it pick neutrals? No. Didn't think it would. 
Um, I, I, I don't want to do the little quest here. Mm, yeah, you get a little bit of money and experience and that's all fun and dandy, but at the same time though, we are pathetically weak and useless now. And we need a lot of experience to get anything done. So doing these little things might be exactly what we need to. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. Good to know, good to know. Um, can I even buy a weapon? A long sword. 22! No, I cannot. It is too expensive for us. I can't buy a... I can't buy even an armor. Uh, does it affect our spell casting in a negative way? I don't know. I'll see if we can steal a few things. Where we might be able to actually buy something worthwhile. It's a dagger, lovely. And yeah, yeah, give me the quests. I'll do them. It's a hard to find decent folk nowadays. Firebeat scroll. No sooner said than done. Hmm. Don't really have any thieving abilities, so I doubt I can really get anything useful out of this. And they're all locked anyway. Wait, wait, wait. Failed to force the lock. Ah, uh, yeah, 18 strength just isn't good for anything, really. Fine, 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 fine. We'll leave it be. Hmm. Give me your quest. Hello there. Ooh, not that I recall that. So we need to take some arrows to someone. No, it was bolts. Crystal bolts, that's what we need to take. So might as well already buy them. It saves, saves us a little bit of time. Where are the bolts? Bolts? This should give us enough money to at least buy an armor or even a weapon. Uh, okay, you. We need to go through here. Ah, uh, don't talk to me. Hey, yeah, uh, it's me, Emmowen. Uh, need to find the guy in red here. Where is it? The worm in Here you are. Greetings, young one. Thank you. Okay, there aren't that many quests we can do here. Hole wants us to return his sword, so that's basically the only thing we want to get from this. At that point, we can pretty much do all of them. Yeah, give me the quest. Thank you, Hole's sword. Barracks. We don't. We might as well do the. Ooh, that's enough gold to actually buy an armor. Um, might as well do the fighting here. Oh, death to you all! I have a blade with your name on it. Yeah. Pathetico, that's what this is. Is 
still it's a little bit of experience much 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 needed experience I'm going to try to aim for quests that don't require really fighting at the start just to get our level up I mean a couple levels should make a significant difference in what we can do Fuller. I should have joined the army the errands crossbow bolts I should have joined the army yeah, 50 experience points and 10 gold. Missions can we do? Almost everything has a little bit of fighting connected to it. A little bit of experience, a little bit of money. I don't think I'll go and kill rats. Yeah, I'm not that desperate for money. Okay, we need the woman's book and give cure poison to cure the cow. Um, I think the potion, antidote potion, is actually more valuable to me, so I'm not finishing that quest. Let's kill the other guy too. It should be worth 20 points. I mean, it's survived this. My talents. Hello? This kind of situation is not useful for our uh, song. We need more than one enemy, or we need to be able to hide or something. Even an uh, enemy in a surrounded by neutrals might be good enough, because uh, if he's confused, he might attack them, and that'll probably cause a lot of shit. Hopefully, hilarious shit. I have no idea if they do. Hopefully they will, especially if they're better at fighting. But they, they're just not peasants trying to go stab people, but mages and things like that. Hmm? Um, of course. Hmm. Okay. Are we done with this? Hello there. Yeah, here's your book. Another 50 experience points. Uh, we'll, we only need a thousand experience points after this to get out a lot. What could we do? Ooh, I, I can think a few. We just have to survive basically traveling through the wilderness. There's a couple of item retrieval quests. I, I think south in Nashville there's the missing guard. We only need to basically reach him and talk to him, and that's oh, would that at this point be pretty much level up for us. No sooner said than done. Things like that. It's so hard to find decent folk nowadays. Okay, can I get a little bit of equipment at least? I'll, I'll, I'll keep the. I'll keep the wooden stick. Hotel's as clean Our as weapon might easily arse. break. So, 71. This armor we're gonna use is chainmail. Huh. Don't know if we can cast in that. Don't think so. But. And it's too expensive anyway. So, studded leather or something like that. Um. 41 gold. We can use a buckler. Huh. Well, at least that's something. Not a lot, but it's something. Can we have a bow? No, that's not a big deal, though. They're way too expensive for us. Could I get a long sword then? Yeah, okay. <sighs> I'll actually buy a, little, a few more arrows. 
So, the healing potions. We have a ton of arrows. We have a sword. And we have a basic armor. The wizard spells have been disabled. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Well, the spells do give us, uh, again, an another additional tool we can later rely on. Maybe get interesting things done. So it's not like it's a terrible, terrible thing. But we definitely want to... Basically want the armors in Baldur's Gate 2 that allow us to cast spells. In the year of the turrets, the lord of murder shall perish. But in his doom he shall spawn a score of mortal Excellent. progeny. Chaos will be sown from their passage. So saith the wise Alondo. Oh, my yeah, let's child, going. I am glad I have found you. Listen carefully. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Let's hurry, child. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. You're perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unhurt. I'm sorry that you feel that way, old man. In cactus. In Dawn is especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. Perhaps I will. I won't. Ah, Imoen, give me your bow. Hey, uh, it's me, Imoen. Ah, yes, forcing companions into your group. Well, helps us going to loan these. For no particular reason, don't be alarmed if I seem like I'm stripping you from all the things useful. Just your imagination. What? I feel so cold. Yeah, it's your imagination. You hit. You possibly hit her. He's unarmed standing there. Ah. Jack of all trades, but hitting a target isn't one of them. Critical miss. Well, a first level character that isn't a spider, what exactly do you expect? Uh. 
Ah. Excellent. Hello and welcome to a solo let's play of Baldur's Gate Saga. Um, as far as I can recall, this should follow pretty much the same modifications as Baldur's Gate, the, nor the normal let's play I did. There might be differences, but they should be minor and uh, not really influence anything. The reason they're even there is I had a hard drive problems that basically compromised a few hundred videos I've uh, already had recorded. So some I some let's plays I could fully recover. Uh, others, I think like Icewind Dale 2 had like a single video at the start, with basically a tutorial phase to get you into the game more or less. Uh, so, but the, everything else was okay. So the downside is the Baldur's Gate let's play that I, I, I already had recorded. Basically, went to the shitters. On the bright side, there I had. I have the normal let's play already uploaded to YouTube, so there's uh, at least a fair chance that it's actually okay. But the solo let's play was not uploaded, and it, it's it's not about 90% of it. It's I could recover. The problem is it's still missing uh, at least a handful of videos, and they're missing in places where I'm not really comfortable of them missing. So it's it's not it's in a most of it's there, but it's in a condition that I, I don't really want to upload it anymore. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I played it with a monk, and to put it short, in Baldur's Gate 1, it functions very well as a thief type. I mean, using your... because it's so fast, especially with boots of speed, that you can easily move outside enemy detection range, uh, sneak, and then come back. You really need to know to do how to do something very well otherwise you can't probably can't even really hit or harm your enemies so I, I can see this becoming a huge problem there at the same time it might not become as big of a problem as I thought thing I, I don't know and that's why I'm playing it because I, I really don't know so gesture the only it has, has no disadvantages compared to a normal bard. It only has one advantage, and it is an advantage. Jester's song does not help allies. Instead, it affects every opponent within 30 feet, and they must save versus spells at plus four, which is a bonus for them, once per round, or be confused. Um, I know that patching in Baldur's Gate 2 adds something to this song, and not like here but when you level up enough you'll get it'll get better I think the it, it at least adds new abilities in addition to the confusion uh, I think chance gets uh, put a slow or even a stun effect on them I'm not quite sure what it does but I, I know it gets better I don't this is a big question mark because I have no idea how this will work in reality because bard songs are not really spells, they sort of work in a realm of their own mechanically. So, but these are very spell type abilities that we can put on other people. But they're not really. I'm not casting anything on them, they're, it's just the influence sphere around us. So, I have no idea how this will work. I'm. I'm hoping it'll cause uh, some entertaining situations with NPC rea reactions to it, uh, um, but we'll see. We'll see. It's a hope. The reason for Jester is because it's because of the song. Uh, I can see it causing shenanigans, and that's always good. But more to the point, um, since we don't have companions, having a buff ability is sort of a eh, he naturally will also benefit from it. The problem is, uh, if I sing a song, I can't do anything else. So at least with this, I can maybe defend myself, say, be invisible or something like that, hard to hit, and still affect my enemies. So uh, I feel it's better for a solo 
played through probably, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Blade would be, if we want to be a more or less a fighter type, but I'm, I might as well play a fighter type at that point. I can see how that would go, more or less. I don't see how a Chester would go. As evil as possible because we're gonna do evil shit. Ah, the re-rolling, oh my god, hopefully we don't have to do this long. Minimum stats on dexterity, intelligence and charisma are very high, so we don't really have to care about them. Uh, dexterity. Physical stats are the most important ones, but I think intelligence also determines how much spells we can learn, I mean how many, and the higher the better, naturally. Wisdom I, I don't see any use for, but everything else has value. Again, charisma I don't know if it has any real use. Naturally, the higher the better, but I think charisma 15 is okay, so strength, dexterity, constitution, and intelligence are what we want. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm giving this five minutes to produce something worthwhile. We're at that point. We're pretty much just taking the best we have. If we haven't found a good value before that, I might have mentioned it some time earlier that I'm a great fan of the point buy system because it never gets reduced to this. It has a few minor weaknesses in that it produces at least ability wise very similar type of characters but for a role playing game uh, I think if stats are the main determination of how different the characters play you're not you haven't made a very good role playing game it's the character that should matter Okay, this isn't too bad. Um, we're very close to at least half decent value. We're mainly interested in strength, constitution, and wisdom because those are the places where we have points to move about. The others will be more or less high no matter what we do. So we don't really have to care about them. So just three stats that we're basically staring at. And I'd like them to all, the, all to be around 15 if possible. That should give us a decent amount of points at least to get the things we really need. During the game we can naturally raise that a little bit. But we want they still want them as high as possible. We need to carry a lot of stuff, so, and melee is probably what we're gonna use a lot at a time, so we can't really Um, yeah, let's store this. We can't really ignore any real stat. We don't have a lot of hit points, so constitution is a must. Although I think constitution back can do a basically a free attack on them. So in, that way you could kill Drist and even the demon you can face in the Tales of Sword Coast part. So and with potions you could easily take down Saravak too and using the surroundings to your advantage. So, in Baldur's Gate 2 it starts to be more of a warrior and it gains ridiculous abilities. With items you can get practical immunity to magic, for God's sake, so it's a... Uh, it, it was an interesting playthrough, and it's certainly a very viable character to solo play this game. Um, actually, I'm not going to just repeat that, that uh, I pretend that everything is just... I'm just playing it for the first time. I'm not. Um, I want to try something that I haven't done at all possible. Uh, that might also provide... Uh, that I can't see how it'll go. I have predictions how this will go, but they are predictions. I want to basically play a bard. Uh, just a very specific type of bard, a jester. It's a bard that only has one thing going for it differently than a normal bard. And it's a normal bard buffs its own characters and yourself. 
A gesture doesn't do anything for you. It affects others, uh, hostiles, and that's it. Other than that, it's just a normal bard. So playing through with a bard, jack of all trades. That's what a bard is. Master of none, and uh, uh, it's it's going to be a problem because jack of all trades I think will work for us very well in Baldur's Gate One because we can use wands, we can use spell scrolls, we can cast some limited amount of spells. We're not a sh totally worthless fighter either, so we have a lot of uh, options at us that we can take advantage of. However, especially in throwing a ball, you 